What's going on? I'm Ujemla and welcome back to my channel. This is part two of building a tier list with vanilla JavaScript. If you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend pausing this video and watching that one because we build out the board, we go through the drag and drop API, the data transfer API, some common functions from the DOM API, just some really good stuff. And I organized my code in such a way that it might take you longer to try to figure out in this video versus starting from scratch by watching the first video. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the image interface of creating images inside JavaScript. We're also going to be looking at the file reader API, which allows us to parse through images and then control the data of images so we can control when we want to render them, wherever we want to render them. And then also we're going to add a new feature to our board by adding a new card bank. So whenever we create a new card, it will automatically be dropped inside our card bank instead of the first tier in our tier list. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And enough of that, let's jump into the code. So here I'm starting up my project. Um, this is where we left off. We had our board established where we had a little emojis, we can move them across our board. So the first thing that I want to do for our board is create a new button. And when we click on that button, we should be able to create a new card. So here I created a button tag and I have the ID add card. To go back to our board, you see the little mini button. I'm also gonna create a new span tag and wrap the span around our H1 and our button tags. So it will be easy for us to do a little bit more positioning where the button will sit on the right side of our title tier list. I'm gonna add a class to the span tag and call it header container. So inside our stylesheet.css file, I'm gonna include some extra styles. So here I have header container, and I'm going to set the display to flex. This way the button will sit next to the title. I'm going to set the width of our header container to 100% of the viewport. And here I'm styling add card where I'm going to set the background to none and then the border to none. So it looks like it's just the plus sign um, emoji. And then I'm going to set the font size to 64, maybe 52. I don't know, maybe 46. The life of a front end software engineer. Okay, so we're gonna try out 40px. So now we're gonna move over to the cards.js file and we're gonna grab our new add card button. So here I have my const add card. I'm going to use the document query selector and use a hashtag to denote that I'm looking for an element that has ID add card. So I'm going to add a comment called add card logic. So it's a little bit more clear how we're div dividing up this code. I'm going to add a couple comments to make our code a little bit more clear. So here, um, you notice that I established unique identifiers, unique IDs for each of our card. And what I want to do is replicate that, but do it in JavaScript. So whenever we press the add card button, we can generate a new card with a unique ID. So here I am defining the add card buttons on click function and then passing in our custom create card function. So this will get called whenever I click on the plus emoji. I'm grabbing hold of the add card buttons on click function and pointing it to our custom add card to board function. So I'm creating a custom function called create card, which once called will return to us a new card that we can append to our board. And inside our create card function, I'm going to create a new div element and creating it as a card. I'm adding the card class to the card node. and setting the attribute to draggable true. So once we dynamically create this card, it can automatically be dragged throughout the entire page. I'm gonna set the card ID to date.now. The date now function returns a number of milliseconds that has elapsed since January 1st, 1970 at midnight. This is a convenient way to generate unique IDs. As long as we're in a different point in time, in milliseconds, we'll generate a new ID. Now I'm going to set the cards on drag start function and point it to our on drag start function. And I'm going to do the same thing for the cards on drag end function. I'm pointing it to the on drag end custom function that we created in the last video. And I'm going to return this card. I'm going to go back up to our add card to board function. And I'm going to grab hold of the first row. 
So I'm just going to use the query selector function and grab the first element that has the row class. And I'm going to append that card to the first row. Oh, I defined the function after I referenced it. So I'm going to rearrange the code a little bit. I'm going to move add card to board above our add card on click line. So now it has access to that function. So now when I press the plus button, we get a little blank card and we can drag it, drop it, and it's looking pretty clean. So now inside our create card function, I wanted to find the cards on click function and point it to our new custom function called delete card. So the idea behind this is when we click on a card, not dragging it, we want to be able to delete that card. So I'm going to define the delete card function. And basically the idea that I have is when we click on a card, an alert will pop up in our browser asking us if we actually want to delete the card or not. And if we say that we do want to delete the card, we'll remove it from the DOM. So here I'm going to define my delete card function that takes in the event argument. The idea that I have for deleting a card is when you click on it, a window alert should pop up asking you if you want to delete the card or not. So instead of using window alert, I'm going to use window confirm. It's like alert, but it renders those two buttons OK or cancel. Window confirm is going to return to us a true or false value, true being that we clicked on the confirm button and false saying that we canceled. I'm going to check if will delete card is true. And if it is true, we're going to get the events target, which is the card that we were dragging, and just call the remove function. This will delete it from the DOM. So when we click on a card, we create a new card, and we click on it, it says, do you want to delete this card? And we have cancel and OK. And when I press OK, it disappears. But I want my cards to actually render an image instead of just rendering text. So what I'm going to do is create a new function called append image, and that function is going to take in our card. I'm separating this out as its own function to help make this code a little bit more readable. So I'm going to create the append image function that takes in the card argument. The first thing that I want to do is create a new input element. So I'm going to call document create element and specify that I want to create an input. I'm going to set the input's attribute type to file, so it can only accept files instead of text or anything else. I'm also going to set another attribute. This time it's going to be accept, and it's going to specify which file types I'll be accepting. And I'm only going to be accepting images. So I use image xpng, image gif, and image jpeg. The next thing that I want to do is set the input's visibility to hidden. I don't want users to be able to click on the card and see that they can drag and drop images. After that, I'm going to define the inputs on change function. So whenever someone does specify which file that they want to upload, this function is going to get called. Inside this function, I'm going to create a new image and specify the height and the width, which is just going to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Next, I'm going to create a new constant called file. Input elements can handle multiple files. But since I only expect one image to be uploaded for each card, I'm just going to grab the first image in the array and then assign that file to my file variable. And then outside of the input on change, I'm going to click on the input when the append image gets called. So basically when we create a new card element. The reason why I want to do this is when we create a new card, we automatically ask the user to upload an image. So when I press on the plus emoji, I'm going to select Naruto. You can see here that I got the file. This is a file object that has a lot of important metadata that allows us to render images. And this is going to be super important to remember when we want to start rendering images. So next, I'm going to create a new constant called reader, and I'm creating a new file reader in this case. File reader is an interface that allows for file objects like we saw in our console log to be read so we can get the source content. This is a great way for us to be able to control when and where we want to render images. Next, I'm going to define the reader's onload function. This function is going to get called when we upload an image to the file reader, and I'll show you when this happens. But inside this function, I'm going to set the image's source to the event target result which is going to be the file that we gave to the file reader to read. Then I'm going to set the images pointer events to none. This is really important because if we don't set it to none, we'll just be able to drag the image and detach it from the card, whereas we just want to pick up the card and keep the image with the card. And then at the very end, I want to append my image to my card. So now I'm going to call the reader's read as data URL and pass in the file that we got when we uploaded the image. When we call read as data URL, the reader's onload function is going to get called. And that's where we're going to get the parsed image data that we can set to our image object and then append that image object to our card. So if we press on, if we add a new card, we can see here we got Naruto and it's rendering inside of our card. You can move it around 
And you notice that our image isn't detaching from our card because we set those pointer events. So now that we can drop cards onto our board, I don't like the idea that we can just drop them in the first tier. So I'm gonna create a card bank. It's just gonna be like an unsorted region. So we don't have to force our users to always have a card sorted. So I'm gonna go back into our index.html file. And then I'm gonna create a new h2 tag called card bank. And that's gonna be a sibling to our board. And then a sibling to that h2, I'm also gonna create a div element with the ID bank. And this is just gonna be a general bank to hold all of our cards. So we see that being rendered. So back into our style sheet, I'm going to define the width of our bank. I'm gonna set that to 80 VW, which is gonna be 80% of the width of our browser. And then set the height to 300 PX. We don't want it to be too big. I'm gonna set the background color to black just to see how it's rendering out. Actually, no, I'm gonna change it to like a dark gray. So we have a little card bank looking very clean. And then I'm gonna set the margin bottom. So there's just a little space between the bottom of the bank and edge of our browser. I'm also gonna create another JavaScript file. This time it's going to be dedicated to our bank. So I'm calling it bank.js. And then I'm gonna create that bank.js file right here. So I'm gonna use a document query selector and then use hashtag bank to grab that DOM element. I'm also gonna give our bank drop functionality just the same way as we did for our tiers. So I created a new function called onDrop, which is going to be assigned to bank onDrop. And then inside this function, I'm gonna grab hold of the ID of the card that we're dragging. So I have our bank uh, element, and now I'm gonna define our onDrop function for our bank element with onDrop card. So what I wanna do is get the ID of the card that we're just dragging, and we're gonna get hold of this card with our data transfer API call, get data. And then we're going to grab hold of that card by calling document.getElementById, passing in the ID that we just got, and then append that card to our bank. I'm also gonna set our bank's on drag over function with an arrow function that calls event prevent default. So we have full control of how we wanna drag and drop our cards. So we can drag our cards over into our card bank, but it looks like our card has been stretched. And this is because we set the height of our card to 100% of its container. So I'm gonna be more explicit and set the height to maybe 86 PX. So it looks a little bit more like a proper card. But the height of the card now doesn't match the height of the tiers. So I'm gonna be more explicit with our tiers as well. So I'm gonna change the cards, the card and the rose height to 85 PX. And hopefully that feels a little bit more natural. So I'll take up more space, space on the page, but it looks good. Yeah, it's gonna take up more space, but I think I like this a little bit more than what we had before. I'm also gonna set the display of the bank to flex so the cards can sit on the left and right sides of each other rather than above and below. So I'm gonna create a new card the Naruto image, and the image is still too tall. So the way that we control the image size is actually in our JavaScript. So we're gonna to go to the uh, cards file, and it's right here in our constructor. So the first parameter was width, and the second parameter is height. So setting the height to 85, you can see now that it fits perfectly in our row. So now that we can add cards to our tier list, I actually want them to be automatically sorted inside the bank. So I'm gonna change our add card to board function to add card to bank. And then instead of grabbing the first row, we're just gonna grab the bank by using hashtag bank and then use bank append child of the card. So whenever we create a new card, it will automatically go to our card bank. So we can see here. So I'm gonna add death note and Naruto. So it's looking pretty solid. I'm gonna delete these two cards now that they don't really match with the theme of our board. So I'm gonna create a new card with Naruto. I'm gonna go through all these different anime. If you guys have any recommendations for which anime I should be watching, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm so I'm gonna add all these shows here and so I have all these shows and if I drag it onto the board, they'll move from the bank over into the right tier. So I'm going to set the flex wrap of the bank 
to wrap. So whenever we have so many cards, it will automatically wrap to the next line so it doesn't overflow. So again, I'm just gonna add all of these cards. So you can see here that these cards just sit in a nice row and it's wrapped so they won't be overflowing on the right side of the bank. And that is it for part two. We can create cards, we can delete them, and we can also create cards with images, which is really exciting. If you liked the video, please drop a like. You can follow me on Twitter where I talk about JavaScript content, interact with the community there. You can also send me some good memes, some good anime recommendations, anything in between. And of course, please subscribe to the channel for more JavaScript content. I'm gonna be releasing more tutorials, more reference guides, educational material, all in the vein of JavaScript and web dev. And with that, I will see y'all in the next video.